there would be no better place to document my journey as a victim of gynecomastia than this book. I want to be very vocal about my struggle with this condition. I was very active kid and participated in most outdoor sports in my early years. But something started happening to me as I hit puberty at about 14 years of the age. My chest started growing differently than expected with a mild persisting pain. My friends started noticing those two bulges on my chest and often passed painfully mocking comments. Thus started a lifelong struggle of hiding my shameful physique and shying away from the society. I started becoming a gradual introvert and stopped moving out with friends, preferring my own company to avoid the psychological insults. As my man boobs enlarged, so did my shame about removing my shirt in public places like temples, beaches, and unfortunately even at home. Back in those days, we had a huge ponds and lakes in my village, but I hardly swam. I was just a silent spectator while the whole family swam together. I don't remember if I had ever been bare-chested at home, even in front of my parents. I distinctly remember that I often waited for everyone to be done with that change of clothes and leave the room before I could change to my sports bar in physical training classes. Over time, I gained weight in my abdomen and started growing comfortable with the idea of protruding belly, masking my abnormal chest. Over the next few years, I mastered the tactics of disguising or camouflaging my male breast with hunched back, loose t-shirts, etc. It was exhausting and quite shameful. The high school phase was quite uneventful since studies kept me busy. I was happy to move to another city, Coimbatore, to pursue my MBBS at the PhD Medical College. But to my disappointment, the hostel had a common bathrooms. While most guys walked from their rooms up to their shower zones with the just towels casually wrapped around their waist, I was always seen sporting a t-shirt or a towel draped around my upper body. One of my seniors, Dr. Bala Subramaniam, is currently a ENT specialist at ESI Hospital, was thoughtful enough to approach me and offer me some advice. He explained how common the condition was and how a surgical procedure called Webster's surgery could end all the embarrassment. I was not even aware until that time that this condition is addressable. It was not until the early years of college that I finally opened to my parents about my condition and their decision to undergo this procedure. I am glad they were very receptive and supported me to get rid of this issue unlike my post, unlike most parents. We reached out to a relative of mine, Dr. Rajendran, a retired professor at MMC, then and scheduled, a, scheduled the consultation in all faith. He was a fantastic plastic surgeon. He explained all his plastic surgery results on a slide projector. It was first time I got exposed to the plastic surgeries of this nature. During one of my semester holidays, I traveled with mom to Chennai to undergo this procedure. His nursing home was very simple setup. He resided on the first floor and the ground floor had a consultation suit and operating theater and a mini recovery area. I had to stay put for three to four days post-operatively. He was kind enough to send food from his home every day during my recovery. I was put under general anesthesia. The surgeon made a half moon like incision under each areola, most of the underlying glandular breast tissue was removed except a little at the circumference of the areola. Drain tubes were then placed on both sides before the incision, incision was closed. The procedure took about 2.5 hours. It's time to wake up. My surgeon called out. I woke up from the surgery to find my unwanted breast gone. I could only lie down on the operating table and wonder, could a simple procedure help me get rid of a decade of bullying? What took me so long to make this decision? Possibly driving my passion towards cosmetic surgery and an urge to educate and help fellow men wake up from the same nightmare that I had once been through as, a, uh, as early as possible. The 72 hours post-operative period at hospital was quite unpleasant. It was very challenging using the restrooms or switching sites on the bed with the drains. The drain tubes kept moving causing a lot of discomfort and pain. I still dread the pond talcum powder that mom used to keep 
dabbing to help me handle the constant sweating as I was not permitted to take bath for 3 to 4 days. I was very relieved with the surgery as almost 80% of my burden was gone. Though Dr. Rajendran was a fantastic plastic surgeon, the available resources for performing the procedure was very minimal then. The procedure still left behind the fat at the sides of the chest. Liposuction was not very common procedure to remove the excess fat. Earlier techniques employed extra areolar skin incisions, leaving behind unsightly scars. A few, a few drawbacks I faced in my surgery were very instrumental in driving me constantly improvise and develop techniques that leave behind almost invisible scars and facilitate quick recovery. I currently use the circumareolar incision between 6 and 9 o'clock position which makes the scar hardly visible, complemented by liposuction to remove the flap at the side of the chest. The procedure changed my life forever. It restored my confidence. Post-surgery, I learned to swim. I am extremely delighted to have become a cosmetic surgeon and have immense satisfaction in having been able to treat almost 2,000 souls like me. Gynecomasia correction is almost a simple daycare procedure now and very rewarding experience.